Okay, so I'm going to focus on the, the word that you were basically asking about, I think, which is asymptotes, and therefore the first objective we're going to look at is understanding the properties of exponential functions, because an exponential function is you know, one of the first ones you met that has an asymptote. So, um, first of all, what form does the function take when it's an exponential function? What does it look like? Not the graph, but the actual numbers. So, well, that's for any function. f of x equals something to the power of x, okay? a to the power of x, that's a basic exponential function. So, for instance, um, y equals 2 to the power of x, y equals um, 0 0.5 to the power of x, y equals 2 over 3 to the power of x. They would all give you an exponential function. So, all of these, if we treat it just like a function, fine, easy enough, but where would they be applied? If, so if we had a real life situation, where would it come up as an exponential function? So this is where the thought process should have happened, and you'd be like, yeah, bang, 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 but yeah. So what produces an exponential function? What situations? No, nope. not area. Because we've got the variable, the thing that changes is the x. So, interest. Okay, which type of interest? Compound interest. Okay. Compound interest does lead to an exponential function. Anything else? Well, they're all linked, they're all the same thing, but a compound interest is an example of a something sequence. Geometric. A geometric sequence. Alright. A geometric sequence is formed by doing what? So think of the difference between arithmetic and geometric. How do you get an arithmetic sequence? And therefore, how do you get a geometric sequence? Arithmetic, you add something to the next um, uh, value and for geometric it times by something. Okay, so we would say <coughs> that geometric sequence has a common ratio. So we've got un plus 1 divided by un, so that's a term, and it's next, the next term, divided, gets you the common ratio. And all of these happen because you have repeated multiplication. Repeated multiplication. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and <clears throat> therefore, if we think of it as repeated multiplication, this 2 to the power of x, for instance, what are you multiplying by each time? What's that? Two. Two. This episode? Two. Two. You're multiplying by 2, so what does this 2 to the power of x mean? You multiply by 2 from depending on what time the x Yeah, so you multiply by 2 depending on how many times you want to do it, and the x is how many times you want to do it. So if I want 15 terms of my sequence, I've got to do 2 to the power of 15. Is that right? Is it 15? Is it 14? Is it 16? Or does it depend on what situation you're in? 
What's the first? So there's the difference. Again, there's a difference between um, any geometric sequence, just the sequence, and then an applied one of compound interest. And then it's different, slightly different again when you're talking the function. So, for instance, what's the first number in this sequence, t to the power of x? So, let's have a look at f of x equals 2 to the power of x. What's the first number in that sequence? 1. No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, what? Who said? 2. Why? Because 2 to the power of 1 is 2. The next number would be 4, four because it's 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and so on. So there is the geometric sequence. Okay. How does that change with money? So compound interest, how would that change? <coughs> So we have taught this. Um, we have talked about this difference, difference between a sequence and no. Don't stop thinking. Yeah. Uh, with compound interest, you have to uh, multiply by the uh, value you get before. Um, <laughs> okay, so normally with um, do that. normally with money, you've got a value to start with. Okay, normally with money, you've got a value to start with. Uh, what is an example of that? So let's talk compound interest. Let's. What would it be? So an interest rate of, let's do 2% per annum compounded yearly. Make it simple. So uh, let's say, what do we normally have then with a mon money situation? We have um, yeah, the capital, the initial value. So let's say it's 2,000 francs. Mm -hmm. Right. So what would be, uh, year on year, the money then if it increased by 2% every year? How would you find out? 2,000 times 1.02 to the power of x, and x is the number of years. Yeah, so x would be the number of years. So... What would be the first term in this sequence? Two thousand or one? Which one is it? Would it be one point zero two? The first term in the sequence. What does the first term in this sequence represent? In the first year. After first year. So you sure? The increase. The increase. Uh, do we forget about the two thousand? Do we not write down the two thousand first? What's the amount at the end of the first year? Two thousand fourteen. Two thousand fourteen. And the next year? Yeah. 2080. 2080.8. Next one. Okay, we'll stop there. So, what is X here? Here, one? Zero. Okay. Zero. One, two, 
you remember that being the slight difference? <coughs> so this is actually when <coughs> we have 2,000 times 1.02 to the power of 0. And this value here is the initial capital. So there's the difference between a financial situation right, and just a geometric sequence. Right? So this would be the initial amount is when x is zero. When we have just a sequence like we had up here, we start when x is one because it's the first number in the sequence. So we've got the same situation. Right. What's the common ratio for this, this sequence? The common ratio is 1.02. Okay, it's what you multiply by. It's always the same thing. Before it was two. This time it's 1.02. So we've got all these applications of an exponential function. Run it repeat. Um, biologists. Anyone do biology in here? Yeah. Where's another exponential function coming from? Bacterial growth. Anything else? Chemists? Half-lives. Right? So that would mean that exponential doesn't always get bigger. It can drop. So how do you get um, exponential decay rather than exponential growth? What's the difference? How do you get one rather than the other? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the thing we've got there. So exponential growth, we would say the ratio R has to be greater than 1, yeah? And when we have exponential decay, what can I say? R has to be... Less than one, okay. Anything else to add to that? Okay, greater than zero. Why greater than zero? Well, if it was zero, but what about negatives? What about negative two? What do you think happens if I have um, negative two to the power of it? Go back because things, if it's squared, then the minus sign will be positive. Yeah. And if it's two power three, it will be negative. Yeah. So if you think, if I did minus two to the power of x, minus two to the power of one is minus two. Right. So let's just have a look. So minus two to the power of x. Okay. You'd end up with minus two, four, minus eight. 16 minus 32 and so on. That would be your sequence. Is that going to lead to an exponential sequence? No, it's kind of a fluctuating above and below. Okay? Right. That is different though. So now we're starting to get look into the behavior of the function itself. So we've got different situations to look at. Because of our financial aspect, we've now expanded it to look at k times a to the power of x, right? So k is the bit you multiply by, so if it's a finance, that's what you would do, okay? So k times a to the power of x. Now, we've got to look at different situations, which is, what if a is negative. Well, we've kind of done that one. It's not exponential. Right? So, minus 2 to the power of x, if that was f of x, 
it doesn't really work. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. But what about if k is negative? So what about doing minus 3 times 2 to the power of x? What happens there? Okay. The f of x equals that. What if x equals a negative? So we have um, f of x equals 2 to the power of minus x, for instance. Okay. Now, what we need to do is have a look at the graphs um, and what what happens when we put those in. So that's going to be your task now. So you're going to look at different examples on your calculators and you're going to tell me what you notice. Now, I'm going to remind you about this one thing, which is what you wanted to work on. Asymptotes. Now, the only way we can really work with asymptotes with exponential functions is we have to remember what happens to the function. All right? Do you understand that? So you have to look in detail, looking at your calculator, looking at the values you can read from your calculator. Where is the asymptote? Can I work it out? It is just going to be a, I have to know it. The reciprocal function, we can do a bit of maths to work it out. But um, with the exponential function, you're going to have to get yourself... Um, happy and you need to recognize what goes on with an exponential function. That's what I'm getting you to say. Sketch each one of those different situations so that you can recognize it. There is one extra thing if you push yourself onto which you can probably just think about. What about y equals k times a to the power of x plus or minus something on the end? What does that do? Ideally, what you'd be able to do is look at that function and tell me where the asymptote is without any working anything out. That's what we're aiming for. Right? So have a look, see whether you can find out. Okay, so asymptote. Who can remind me of the definition of an asymptote? It's like a line, and um, it, it, it never reaches the surface. Yeah. So an asymptote is a value that the function will never be but does go towards, it's important, because there will be lots of values that function never, uh, never be, but this function, either of these, will never be minus 2. That doesn't make minus 2 an asymptote. Which value is an asymptote? What y value will it not be? Zero. Zero. So y equals zero is an asymptote. It's an asymptote because they get closer and closer and closer to zero. Now, can you... Think about why y equals zero is an asymptote. So if we have a look at this blue one is a to the power of x. Okay? Y why do I get the situation? Where y equals, should we say, y equals two to the power of x? Why does it all? Why will it never be? So we're saying, two to the power of x will never be zero. Why is that the case? Because no matter, no matter what x value you put, it will always be like zero, which is equal one, for example. Okay. So as x gets really big. So as x tends up to infinity, what happens to 2 to the power of x? It gets bigger. So this is the yellow one, yeah? So that's why it goes up. Can we explain why it comes down here and never goes to zero, though? So that's when we say, and this is something you've got to get used to in exams, when x tends to negative infinity... Why does it get closer and closer to zero but never get there? Think of your, what someone just said, I think Valentina said, think of your rules of indices and how you set them out. So after this value, what do we know about x? Negative. 
x is negative. So we end up with, we're looking at 2 to the power of negative 1, 2 to the power of negative 2, 2 to the power of negative 15, 2 to the power of negative 100. Why, does, why do those values get closer and closer to 0 but never get to 0? Uh, would it be 1 over 2 to the power of negative 15? Yeah. So it's never even. So it'd be 1 over, what's 2 to the power of 15? Big number, yeah? yeah. Right? And 2 to the minus 100 is 1 over 2 to the power of 100 is? A lot. A lot. Not 200. Okay. Some people will tell me that. It's a big, big number. And what happens to a fraction when you get a really, really, really big denominator? It becomes small. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. But what will a fraction never equal? Zero. Zero. Which is why it gets closer and closer to zero. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but never gets there. All right? Now, the other way round, the decay curve, the blue one, it's just the opposite. So, um, because we've got 2 to the power of negative x, well, what was positive x becomes a negative x, so that whole fraction issue becomes when you've got positive x's instead. So that's why we have an asymptote at that. Now, do you think, do you think that multiplying this by something will change that? So, for instance, if I have y equals minus 3 times 2 to the power of x, or I have y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x, do you think that will change either the y-intercept or the asymptote? So what will multiplying everything by minus 3 do? It will up. I'm hearing a load of white noise, I can't, can't get any words out. What is it? What will minus 3 do to everything? Again, it's like doing f of x and then doing minus 3 times f of x. So it will just... So the minus does a reflection and the 3 does a stretch. So what will... How will minus 3 times 2, two to the power of x affect the 2 to the power of x graph? So it will reflect it in the, in the x-axis. And therefore, this does change, but becomes what? Does it become negative 3, for instance? <laughs> Why not? Oh, it will stretch correctly. Because it doesn't stretch this point. So that's, I know it's the end, but let's just... Put this in just to check so you can think afterwards, because um, you've got your calculators to do what I'm doing. So y equals minus 3 um, times 2 to the power of x. Okay. So it has changed the intercept. Okay. What do you think, th where do you think the intercept for 3 times 2 to the power of x would be? That's 3. So y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x. We'll go through 3. So it does change, changes the intercept. Does it change the asymptote? No. No, because the same thing happens. It just happens a little bit later. 3 times a very, very, very small number is still... Very, very, very small. Okay? So that's why it doesn't. Now I will carry on next time I see you. When is that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. With the asymptote stuff because we've got reciprocal functions. But you guys, I want you to, to think about the other options for exponential functions. And I want that down and understood when I ask you tomorrow. Do you understand me? I need to actually do it. Do I need to put it on sharing my homework? Okay, then I will. <coughs>
Have a good day.